this generation wow. is a generation that will usher the coming of Christ. Therefore, we need more fire. We need more of God than ever. We need God. We need God back into our society. Yes, All my troubles are ending right now. They went to like a fetish priest or like a spirit that has a source with a river. And that's why you keep dreaming and see river. If I am now, you can ask your family members. They also see the same thing. You are among us. Love your eyes for Jesus. On that day, he said it. Out of the belly shall flow. Bring us, 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 bring us. You will not walk through the same pain of your mother, oh, yes, Lord. of your father. Amen. You will break out. You will break out. You will shine. You will shine. You will shine. Amen. Bless the Lord of my soul and know that is within me. Father, we bless your name. No one like you, Jesus. Be glorified and be highly in the Lord. Father, we magnify your name. church is this hallelujah take your seats in heavenly places thanks for joining us tonight hallelujah tonight is going to be a powerful night hindrances to a fruitful growth hallelujah tonight is going to be mega please if you're online right now please share like comment bring your family and your friends to be involved hallelujah because God is here hallelujah amen this is the Lord's doing if it's marvelous in our sight, let's stand onto our feet one more time. Hallelujah. And begin to pray in the spirit before we welcome the man of God. Lirianda Baba. Open your spirit to receive the word that is about to be administered. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let's put our hand together for our Papa of the house, Reverend Albert Ofori. Amen. Amen. Please take a seat quickly. 
And then if all of us can come on the f- uh, first row, that would be great. Auntie, you can come here. Yeah, that would be great. And ladies, please come to the front row. You know, there's not many of us here this wonderful um, evening. Amen. Awesome. Right, let's see what the Lord will give to us, and then we can go uh, home and get some rest. Amen. Are you blessed? Awesome. Let's pray. Blessed Father, we thank you tonight in the name of Jesus. We ask the Lord, as we study a little bit of your word, we ask the Lord, as always, impart to us revelation of your word in the name of Jesus. Touch our spirit and touch our soul. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Oh, your amen is quite low. A better amen. Oh, it's still very low. I can hear one, only one person saying, I can literally hear only one person. The rest, where are your voices? Oh, I still can hear only one person. I can't hear the rest. Now I can hear two. I can hear a male's voice. I can hear only one female's voice. But there's a lot of females in the room. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, very, very briefly, can we quickly look at uh, John chapter number 11? John the 11th um, chapter. John the 11th chapter. Let's take some few points from there. That will be point for prayer tonight. Those of who are not here today, I believe they will miss a lot. Amen? They will miss a lot, a lot, a lot today. Amen. And if you can do me a favor and grab me my Bible, please, in the office, please. Thank you so much. Uh, John chapter number 11, the verse number 1. We're going to start reading now. Amen. All right. So now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister, what? Martha. Verse 2. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her what? Hair. Whose brother Lazarus was what? Was sick. Let's take the verse 2 again. It was that Mary. You see, the Bible does not identify the type of Mary who anointed Jesus because there are probably three or four Marys in the Bible. Uh, The first Mary we know is the mother of Jesus, right? And then we also know another Mary of Mary of what? Mary of what? Remember, you forgot. Magdalene, correct. And then we have this Mary too. Is This is the same Mary that was spoken in Mark when Martha and Mary, you know, one was in the kitchen and one was at the feet of Christ. It's the same Mary we are talking about here. That's it. So now we've got three, how many Marys? Three, isn't it? Yeah. So that's why the Bible is trying to say that it was the Mary who anointed, who wiped the feet of what? Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. We do want to pray just for 10 seconds. Just lift your hands. Begin to whisper something to the Lord right now. Come on. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, it was this Mary, it was this same word, Mary, who was at the feet of Christ. Same Mary, who anointed the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. Hallelujah. Hair is symbolic of what? Glory. Amen. So, in other words, she, anno- she gave her glory for the exchange of his glory. Praise God. She gave her pride. She gave her life for the exchange of the glory of the master. Hallelujah. So, we are coming to a, a season where we must exchange what we have and get what he has. The Bible says that the 24 elders all cast their crowns. That is also another, you know, um, another text that has something to do with this um, um, glow we are talking about. They cast down their crowns. They remove their crowns to honor the Lord, to worship him, to glorify him. Hallelujah. 
In other words, they kill their pride. They kill their ego. Whatever makes them feel big before the Lord is taken away because they are before the bigger God. This night we are before the bigger God. And whatever has blocked us, whatever has covered us, whatever is now becoming like a mask, blocking us from seeing the face of the master, today we have to remove it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. With fragrant oil, fragrant oil, not any, not just any poor oil, but it was a fragrant oil, and wiped his feet with her hair. Think about it. Fit is symbolic of service. Another time we go there. Whose brother Lazarus was who was sick? Let's go to verse 3 quickly. Verse 3 quickly. Therefore, the sisters sent to him, that's Jesus, right? Saying, Lord, that's me, Adonai, Master, right? Behold, he whom you love is what? Is well. He whom you love is rich. He whom you love is prosperous. Him who you love is healthy. Him who you love is what? Unhealthy or sick. How can, how could a man that God loves become sick? How can a man so dearly to God become sick? How can a man who is all, whose sisters are serving the Lord Breaking their alabaster bosses, wiping his feet with their hair. How could their brother be sick? I don't understand. How could you be in church and still be in need of something? How could you claim that God loves me and so have some financial, you know, and so sick in your body and so be stressed at work? How 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 is that possible? Him that God loved, him that had a relationship with God was sick. In other words, God can love you, yet you can still go through tribulations. God can love you. God loved Job. People say God neglected Job. No, God did not neglect Job. God's love for Job was still around. You see, God loved Lazarus, but yet Lazarus was still in pain. Lazarus was still sorrowful. Lazarus was still sick and about to die. In other words, God, you can be loved by God and still die. That means the love of God is not, is not, is not, is not the thing, it's not a catalyst for one to live long. Because we all die. Hallelujah. Am I going somewhere? Verse 4, let's go. Verse 4, let's go. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Not by, but through it. That means Jesus did not pray for Lazarus to be sick. The sickness of Lazarus didn't come from God. The pain and the sorrow and the tribulations of Lazarus didn't come from God. It came as a result of the nature of this world. We are bound by this earthly vessel. And this earthly vessel sometimes can get weak. Can go through a series of whatever it is. Like the fact that God loves doesn't mean when you are pregnant, you shouldn't feel whatever they feel. Or when you go to the labor world, it should just be very easy for you. It doesn't, it doesn't happen that way. Hallelujah. But Jesus is saying here, even though the situation, the circumstance that you find yourself in, even though it was not orchestrated or I didn't create it, but yet I still can be glorified through your circumstance. So sometimes people say that, oh, it is God that brought me into what I'm going through. God never created it. The devil can create it. Sometimes because we are bound and live in this world, we are faced with many challenges. But God is saying that it doesn't matter the storm, the health issue you go through. My name can still be glorified through that circumstance. At the end of the day, was God not glorified in the life of Job? Yes. The end product is that God shall be glorified. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody here. Yeah, that's the end goal. The end goal is that even though
before. You are being challenged at work. You are being harassed, abused. You are being demoted at work. But God said that in the midst of your demotion, I will show my faithfulness. In the midst of your declination, in the midst of your frustration, God said, I'm going to take that issue you are going through. And I want to review my power. I want to manifest my presence. Because you see, what that tells me that every time God is looking for people with problems. Hello? Yeah, because without a problem, the power of God can be used. The power of God is to break yokes and problems are yokes. So without yokes, without problems, the power of God cannot be in use. So when the, and God anointed Jesus of what? Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about looking for problems, looking for people who are afflicted so he could touch them. So, I'm here to announce to you that if you have been afflicted, Jesus is looking for such people. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus didn't just bond with the rich people. He had a bond with everybody. So, if you have any issue in your body, you are the right person that Jesus is looking for. It might be finance. It might be health. It might be marriage. It might be your kids. It might be a work. It might be anything at all. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye who are heavenly laden. Come unto me and I'll give you rest. Hallelujah. What's the power of God for? To give rest to people. Hallelujah. Rest for your souls. Rest for your life. Hallelujah. Today many people are carrying problems. But yet, don't even want to come and pray. Hallelujah. So they wait for an affliction before they start to do what? Something. Quickly, let's finish verse 5. I think I'll, I'll, I'll end here at verse 5. Quickly. Verse 5. Now, Jesus loved who? Come on, you tell me. Loved who? And? And Lazarus. Three people. Jesus loved them. But yet, they were going through some, some stuff. Sometimes when you are there, you go through some challenges. And you think, does God love me? Does God care for me? Does he see me? Like Hagar and Ishmael were on the desert. The lad, the boy was so thirsty to death. And she thought God, that God didn't even care about her. All of a sudden, an angel of the Lord appeared and said, hey, that's a well. Go get it. So in the midst of your pain, God sees you. God knows what you are going through. And sometimes, if you're not very careful, you may conclude that God has not seen you. Sometimes, a family can go through some crisis. Sometimes, a church can go through some process or go through some challenges. It doesn't mean that the eyes of the Lord has left the church. Hallelujah. For example, sometimes, I mean, today when you came in, not many people here, you were like, is God's presence here? God's presence is not dependent on number. It's dependent on committed hearts. Hallelujah. Anyway, you came home with, with God's presence anyway. Does it make sense here? Yeah? yeah. Hallelujah. So, he loved Martha, loved Mary, and loved who? Lazarus. But yet, they were going through something. The world we live in today, you don't get this message. That when you go through something, it doesn't mean God has neglected you. Now, the point to note here is that God, whatever you have found yourself in, God is not the originator of what you are going through. God did not create what you are going through. It was created by the devil or you went in there by mismanagement. Or a family can put you there. Or sometimes the enemy can just bring a friend and somebody around you, and then before you realize, because they come in this guy, so you don't even know who they are, and before you realize, you, you see yourself in a certain problem, you can't even get yourself out. But God said, it doesn't matter what you go through, because, you see, what you are going through, God sees that he also going through it, because you carry the nature of God. Does it make sense here? Quickly, go, go to verses, go. Verses. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Think about it. Sometimes you pray, now God, I need a job. And then it's as if, and you go for the interview, and then you don't get it. You're like, I thought I prayed about it. I thought I had a dream, and I had a new job. 
I came to church. And there was a prophetic word. I, I, I actually saw the seed of a hundred pound. I was confident I would get a job. What happened? Two days, Jesus did not attend to who? To Lazarus. How many days? How many days? Two days could be 2,000 years. Because a day is like what? And two is like what? Yeah, that's a revelation. Clap for the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. That's probably what happened. Can I tell you something? When you walk with God, there's, see, sometimes God can delay you. Not all delays are spiritual. Not all delays are from your ancestors or from family witches. Some delays are, 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 are deliberately orchestrated by God. So you don't step ahead of him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because some of us here, we have just met a man we assume that's my husband. Maybe your husband is coming in four years. So God intentionally will create a, it's like, it's like there will be a delay. So you miss the one you think it is for the next four years. Maybe another 4,000 years. Two days, the Lazarus died in two days. It's as if today, yeah, you're, 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 I mean, you are there, you get a phone call that somebody has passed away. And you are like, okay, you don't make any phone call to check out whether it's true or not. You don't call any family member or friends to find out. And in one week or two days, you just show your faith. People think, what's wrong with you? You are heartless. Well, they call Jesus heartless. But you know why? He has something he wanted to do. There is something always in the mind of God. He may, he may, he may appear too late, but he's never late. He's right there on time. I see God coming your way. God will come your way. He will come your way. He will come your way in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Two days he wasn't coming. And they were like, wow. Two days he wasn't coming. Sometimes a church member can be sick and they ring a pastor and they're waiting for a pastor's call. The call hasn't come yet. I don't think pastor cares about me. Well, Jesus, I, I believe Lazarus said that the, the, the master, my sisters are serving you. They provide for you. Alabaster boss, fragrant oil. That costs a lot of money. They, they, they could have actually sold that oil eh, and paid for my hospital uh, 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 bills. But they, they, she, she, she actually poured the oil on you and wiped her feet, her hair with, uh, with your feet. Think about it. So how could you not attend to our need? And two days. And when he showed up, it was actually four days. It's too late. The bones is not dry. Lazarus is buried. Impossible or impossible. Can do nothing about it. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Four days. No phone call. Four days. No one is checking up on you. You don't come to church. On Sunday, Monday, nobody checks on you. No one rings you on Tuesday. By Wednesday, you start to conclude nobody likes me in the, in the church. You conclude, oh, the pastor don't care about me. Oh, I'm in a unleashed group. Oh, I'm in royal purpose. Or wherever you belong to, no one cares about what I'm going through. I ain't got no money in my, in my, in my account. There's no food in my fridge. We are suffering. Pastor don't care. I give offering. That's how you conclude. It happened to Lazarus. I wish I preached this word on Sunday. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> but, but, but Sunday, I'm not preaching on Sunday. The guest is going to preach and sing on Sunday. I wish I was, I wish I could have bombarded this, this, uh, uh, think about it. Sunday, you, you miss church. And then Monday, no, no, no one is checking on you. Tuesday, when sometimes it can be a week, nobody has checked up on you. You are like, ah, this church, the way I will see first, they be smiling to me. So I, I, I'm not in church, I don't even care. And sometimes you are even in a hospital. Nobody even knows you're in a hospital. Just when you are about to die, we appear. Just when you are about to breathe, your last pastor appears and lays his hand upon you and then you wake up from bed. But if we came earlier, you wouldn't have known any, any of God's power. God's power is usually manifested when all natural power is exhausted. You didn't catch what I just said. 
she had been looking for many physicians and her situation was, was getting worse. At the latter stage of her problem, she met Jesus. Jesus liked to show up. When he sees that all oh, men, you went to your uncle, no help. You went to your husband, no help. You went to your manager, no, you went everywhere, no help. Then he will show up. That's how God will praise. Sometimes God will wait. Uh, you will take paracetamol, no healing. <laughs> no injection, no healing. No healing. Then when you are about to give up, then God will show up. May God show up in your case. May God show up in your situation. May God show up with a miracle in your house in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I speak grace over your life. Uh, that as God showed up, may God show up. Uh, may you not run because God has delayed. Uh, may you stand tall and stand stronger in spite of the faith you are in. Uh, in spite of what you are going through, I declare a decree. Even the storm may blow against you. The waves may come up against you. You will not die in the way. You will not die in the storm. Uh, I speak over your life. Uh, God will not appear at the beginning. God will appear at the end. So hold on to your faith because the master is about to show up. Shout the master is about to show up. About to show up. Just hold on. Don't give up. Don't be like Mary. Oh, if you were here, there's no if with God. It's always when. There's never if with God. If you walk with God, there's never what if. He said, if you were here on time, my brother would not have died. God, if you loved me, I wouldn't have gone through what I'm going through. Hallelujah. And sometimes it looks like your life is just going down. It's like it's a decrease from 10, 9. You are, you are still praying and fasting, but 8. You think, what is going on? Like Job, houses, cars, possessions, children, all dying one by one. You're thinking, hey, I'm next in line to die. No, you're not going to die. You won't die. No, you won't die. You will do well. David said, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's our sure word. All the promise of God are yes in Christ and amen. That's what the Bible says. And Abraham did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strengthened in faith. He was what? Strengthened in faith. He said, Lord, what do I get? Seeing I go childless. Mary said, Lord, if you were here, you see, if 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 it's a sign of doubt, if it's a sign of, a sign that your 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 faith is boistering, you're struggling with your faith. That's what happened to Mary. You doubt. You are a moon Christian. The moon appears, you are faith. The moon disappears, your faith disappears. When the moon comes, your faith comes. That's how your faith operates. Your faith should not be based on logic. Your faith should be based on spiritual and the word of God. The word of God. That is that a word is settled in heaven. Your faith should be settled. Whether the sun appears or not, you should have faith. Let's look at the last verse. Where, where Jesus finally says something to Lazarus and then we will close. So we have verse 5 here. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have verse 5. Are you following? Yeah? Are you following? So Jesus did not give immediate attention to the news of Lazarus' death. Jesus played down on the news. <laughs> he delayed in coming. And as a matter of fact, the disciples said, Jesus, the disciples discouraged Jesus from going to what? To Bethany or to Jerusalem. I'm not sure which one it was. Maybe Jerusalem. Yeah, definitely Jerusalem. You know why? Can I tell you why? Watch me. Lazarus is dead. He needs to be resurrected. The same location that Lazarus was is the same location people want to kill Jesus. Same place. Same place. It was the same place. So it's a, life, it's a matter of life and death. It's either Lazarus dies and then he stays where he is. And, or he goes, both of them dies. Three, he goes and resurrects Lazarus. It's a risky faith. Jesus' life himself was in trouble. He was facing death. And disciples also. So likely, likely, likely was that all the disciples would die. There's no ministry. 
Think about it. Learn to dissect God's word. The risk involved in raising the dead. So Jesus now penetrated, built faith, came and stood before the tomb of Lazarus. When he came, a lot of mourners. You know, recently I heard in Africa that the, the coffin of the queen shall come to Africa. They would have done it very well for them. Oh, yeah. I think the way they did it was very decent, very simple. They would have done a highly sophisticated funeral. Very complicated one. They, they would have hired proper mourners. People who know her professional mourners. Who dances. Who put coffins on their shoulder and dance. Yeah. What they did now is too, is too, is too peaceful. Yeah. It's too, it's too, it's too nice. They would have, they would have shaken the, 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 the queen. And something, they shake people that people actually wake up. Oh, yeah. The mourners were just mourning. I was just watching a, 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 a video recently on TikTok. A woman, hey, queen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, queen. Oh, you have left us. <laughs> oh, queen. You should have told us before going. Oh, why did you do that? I was coming to UK. I was hoping to meet you and greet you. Oh, queen, you have gone. <laughs> oh, Africans. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, amen. Have you seen that before? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's what they were doing. That's what the mourners were doing at the, around the tomb of Lazarus. Mary. <laughs> oh, Mary. Oh, Mary. You are a good man. Your brother is gone. He's gone to heaven. Let, let him go and rest. <laughs> that's what they were doing because, because it's over. Say it's over. It's over. It's over. Oh, oh, Mary, don't worry. If it was the will of God, your brother would have lived. It's okay because maybe he's tired here on earth. He needs to go home and rest. Maybe God needs him in heaven. Let him go and rest. <laughs> they keep crying. Then Mary will be like, I'm okay, okay. Then Mary will start crying. Then they will cry along to Mary, don't worry. You know your brother was a good man. Maybe if he stayed here on earth, he would have committed sin and maybe would have ended in hell. That's why God has taken him away. So it, it is God who give it. And it's God who takes it away. So Mary, if God has taken it away, it is okay. Don't worry. Calm down. After three months, you'll be alright. <laughs> You're just crying. Hallelujah. That's what, the, that, well, that's what I heard my mom pass. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she needs to go and rest. Then Jesus entered and said, Mary, did I, did I not tell you that if you believe because I am the 